attentive. Speak to all wisdom. Be attentive. Save your people, O Lord, and bless your inheritance, and bless your inheritance. To you, O Lord, I cry out, my God, do not silence you. Frightened them thoroughly, but he reassured them. 
you need not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus as Naz of Nazareth, the one who was crucified. He has been raised up, he is not here. See the place where they buried him. Go now and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, where you will see him just as he told you. They made their way out and fled from the tomb, bewildered and trembling. And because of their great fear, they said nothing to anyone. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. Christ is risen from the dead. By death he trembled death, and to those in the tombs he granted life. Thank you for joining us. My name is Deacon Robert Kirshner, and on behalf of our pastor, Father Bruce Reeby, my brother Deacon, William Frederick, welcome to St. Joseph Parish. I am glad you have joined us online for this divine liturgy. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Christos vos cres. Christos anesti. Alithos anesti. We have proclaimed the resurrection, and whether you say it in English, Slavonic, or Greek, death is defeated. We have been granted life, and the joy and triumph of the resurrection is fresh in our minds. So you may have wondered, as I proclaimed the Holy Gospel a few moments ago, why do we revisit Pilate learning of Christ's death? Why do we revisit the tomb as Joseph of Arimathea provides for Christ's burial? And why do we revisit the myrrh-bearing women as they come to anoint Christ's body with spices and oil. I'll get back to this in a moment, but first I want to discuss one aspect of our liturgical practice. In our Eastern Christian tradition, the Sunday Gospel readings are prescribed and thematic, going as far back as five Sundays before Great Lent begins, and all the way through Pentecost Sunday. That's 19 weeks in total, if you include Palm Sunday, Easter, and Pentecost. The readings and themes are the same each year. Oftentimes, our Sunday worship during this period is built around a particular gospel reading, such as the Sunday of the Prodigal Son, Thomas Sunday, or today, the Sunday of the Myrrh-Bearing Women. Other times, these themed Sundays honor a particular saint or event, St. Mary of Egypt and Palm Sunday are two examples. Recently, I was explaining this aspect of our faith tradition to someone, and I shared that as I have gotten older, these themed Sundays begin to feel like trusted friends. Familiar mile markers down a well-known trail, and they are set out in such a way that they help me place a certain mindset and continue to provide spiritual instruction and needed guidance for me. This is a gift from the church. Yet there's always one Sunday that feels just a little bit out of place, at least sequentially, in the narrative of the story, and it's today, the Sunday of the Merbarian Women. We're now two weeks outside of Easter, and the tomb is empty. Yet, as I was saying earlier, here we are hearing about Christ's death and burial and revisiting the myrrh-bearing women as they come to anoint Christ's body with spices and oil. So let's take a closer look at this. Pretend you don't know the end of the story. Place yourself in the moment as we find these women watching Joseph of Arimathea receive Christ's lifeless body taken down from the cross. They watched and possibly helped Joseph give Jesus a proper burial. They witnessed the stone sealing the tomb. These are women who have been with Christ throughout his ministry. They have walked with and know the Theotokos, the mother of Jesus. These women have witnessed miracle after miracle and have heard and seen Christ preaching in the villages, the synagogues, and countryside. These women are more 
morning, the man who told people shunned by society, blessed are you. These women are mourning the man who ate with sinners and told them they are the reason he came. These women are mourning the man who called people out of their unrighteous lifestyles and offered them what the religious leaders never did and never could, the unconditional love of God. These women loved Jesus, and now they grieve for the loss of their beloved friend and leader. He is gone, and all hope is lost. Yet, yet, even in the face of hopelessness, these women act. Even though they are afraid, these women act. Even though they are filled with unthinkable grief and despair, these women act. The myrrh-bearing women came to anoint Christ not out of a desire for recognition or reward from Jesus, but because they loved him. Christ's ministry, which they witnessed firsthand, is one of love and service to those in need, those who are lost and forgotten. These holy women are replicating this very teaching and want nothing more than to make certain his body is blessed with sweet-smelling fragrance. And in response to this love, in response to this action, these women are honored with being the first witnesses to Christ's resurrection. They were the first to know the joy that Christ had defeated death, that hope was fulfilled, that debt, despair, and grief were not all that was left for them. Now, like I said, we know the end of the story. We know the joy of the resurrection and the promise of the risen Lord, yet in our lives we also deal with despair, grief, loss of hope. The global pandemic we're currently experiencing has challenged all of us and maybe even have brought about feelings of despair or loss. When we feel abandoned, when we try to follow God's will but can't see the way, when we lose someone or something we don't think we can live without, we share in the experience of the myrrh-bearing women. The point of my message to you is this. Will we choose to be like the myrrh-bearing women? Will we choose action? I think there's a reason we return to the tomb after Pascha. I think we are brought back to this moment so we can appreciate the example given to us by the women. The myrrh women returned to the tomb of Christ out of love and service. They gave us an example of how to act in the midst of a bad situation. During this global crisis, how are you choosing love and service? Here are some examples that I've had the privilege of witnessing over the past several weeks. For some, it means caring for a family member, even when it is difficult and requires sacrifice. For some, it means finding new ways to become community, online liturgy, conference calls with fellow parishioners, going on a hike, and appreciating the beauty of creation and life awakened in the spring. And for some, it means volunteering. Volunteering at the Greater Cleveland Food Bank, traveling to parts of our city and filling little free libraries with children's books in communities where those are needed, or making masks for hospitals, care facilities, and social service organizations such as the Westside Catholic Center. It doesn't matter what you do or how small the act may seem to you, it just matters that you choose to act, and that it is done in love and service. Christ died, but has risen, trampling down our despair, trampling down injustice, sickness, and death. And like the women who sought only to serve and love the Lord, let us go forward to our families, to our community, and to our world, seeking only service and love of one another. Our action will not only serve the Lord, but it will bring others to Christ, so that they may too know this glorious resurrection.
Christ is risen. of the true faith always now and ever and forever
that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you, and that the good spirit of grace may rest on us, on these gifts you have present to them, all your people. Grant us to the mercies of everyone who the Son, and whom you are blessed, together with your all holy good and life creating spirit, now, never, and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. Let us love one another, that with one mind we may profess. The Father, with the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, one in essence, cannot be.
the spirit brought to perfection. Especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and more easily, the therefore most and ever virgin Mary. Amen. 
Save your people, O God, and bless your inheritance, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen from the dead. By death he trampled death, and to those in the tombs he granted life. Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen. May our hope be filled with your grace, O Lord, so that we may sing of your glory. For you have given us worthy to partake of your holy divine immortal, pure and life creating mysteries. Keep us in your holiness so that all the day long we may live according to your truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Arise, now that we have received the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly life, created in an awesome mysteries of Christ, let us worthily thank the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We thank the Master, by the fact of our souls, that this morning we meet this worthy of your heavenly and wonderful mysteries. Through the prayers and the intercession of the glorious day of Hocos and our Virgin Mary, who are your saints, and they straight our path, confirm us in purity, guard our lives, and safeguard our steps. For you are our saint, and each and we give glory, honor, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you shattered the bronze gates and iron bars. You freed the holy souls, held fast in the depths of Hades, and led them to appear to many after your resurrection. O Lord, in these holy days of your resurrection, remember all of us here present. Pour upon us a rich gift of your Holy Spirit. And plant records through into our hearts, so that we may always do your will and please you. You are gracious God, and you love us, and we give glory to you, together with your eternal Father, and your all holy living life, creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Blessed be the name. Bishops of Ohio will be meeting on Monday to apparently discuss when and how churches are going to reopen. So hopefully next week at this time, we'll have some information, some updates on how that's going to happen. Uh, Bishop Elon has indicated that next week, next Sunday, May 3rd, we once again will be closed. But after that, who knows? Let's be optimistic that some sort of plan will be in place that will enable us to return to celebrate the Divine Liturgy, be with our fellow parishioners, as we are accustomed to doing. In the meantime, stay connected, visit our website, stjoebyz.com, on a regular basis. There's updates, wonderful articles um, from our children, from our adults. It's a good place to be. And on Wednesdays, join us for the Fireside Chant. There's um, uh, conversation, and this week it'll be regarding reopening our churches. Your concerns, maybe how you feel we should be going about this and getting your opinions and views. We go from 7 to 8 on Wednesday evening. Feel free to join us. Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. Christos Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and loving kindness always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Glory to you, o Christ our God, our glory to you. Christ is risen from the dead by death, he trampled death, and to those in the tombs he granted life. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, give a blessing. May Christ our true God, risen from the dead by death, traveling death, and granting light to those in the tombs, have mercy on us and save us through the prayers of his most pure mother, of the holy glorious and illustrious apostles, our holy father John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, Saint Joseph, patron of this church, and of all of the saints. For Christ is good and loves us all. Oh.